How y'all doing? I hope y'all doing good. Hallelujah. How y'all doing tonight? I hope everybody is well. Mm, hallelujah. I hope everybody is well. I hope everybody is in God's covering. Hope you all's families are well. We about, to, we about to talk some good stuff tonight. I hope y'all are doing good. Um, I hope God is giving you guys eyes to see and ears to hear. In this time, I'm on Facebook and what I'm on TikTok. But we're going to dive deep. And what is going on in the world? What are all these hurricanes about? What is the the world coming to? You are precious. Hallelujah. Thank you. <laughs> um, hi, Facebook. But I'm a, I want to start off in Psalms 91. So I want to start off in prayer in Psalms 91. But we are going deep. It's going to be teaching. It's going to be praying. It's going to be prophecy tonight. That's why I wanted to go on um, Facebook as well. So I can literally um, save this. Because I don't know how to save in tiktok yet like my lives so let me um hallelujah we thank you let's let's just thank the lord first before i dive into psalms 91 and into the words and everything that god is is telling us tonight so um let's just thank god i invite you in father god let it be all of you and none of me hallelujah as i decrease father god let you increase hallelujah hi bishop how you doing tonight Hope all is well. Hope all is well, brother. Hallelujah, Father God. As I decrease, you increase, Father God. Let this word be none of me and all of you. Let me be a vessel, hallelujah, to give out the word to the people, to give out the food to the people in this hour, hallelujah, to set the captives free, hallelujah, hallelujah, to be the Joseph in this hour, hallelujah. So we just invite you in, hallelujah, on this live. This is your live, Father God. Speak through me, hallelujah. I am yielded to you, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you that we are safe. We are on this live, hallelujah. We thank you that we have lights right now. We thank you that we have service to get here on this live, hallelujah, hallelujah. We thank you that we have eyes to see and ears to hear father god the things that we don't understand we ask that you um give us the understanding as we lean into your understanding and not our own hallelujah we thank you that we are not deceived in this hour um for many are deceived in this hour hallelujah hallelujah we put away um the love of this world hallelujah and we come into the father we come into you in this hour hallelujah 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 thank you thank you jesus Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. MD, you are continuously on my heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for Brother MD. Hallelujah. Hallelujah that you are working miracles in his life, whether he feels it, whether he sees it. Hallelujah that you are working in his favor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, give him the things that you want to um, have him to see in this hour. Hallelujah. Name is Dallas. Okay. Hallelujah. Dallas. I've been calling you MD this whole time. Hallelujah. We we thank you for brother um, Dallas. Hallelujah. What are you wanting concerning him? Let it be clear in this hour. Hallelujah. Let him get what he needs. Hallelujah. Out of this journey, out of this situation. Let him grow in you and love. Hallelujah. So he shall be a testimony to help others. Hallelujah. Through his situation. We ask for favor. Hallelujah. We ask for mercy. Um, and compassion mercy over all hallelujah we need mercy and we need to run throughout to our father hallelujah we need to be under the covering and that's why i've literally god wanted me to wear this covering today for a symbolic reasons because this is where we need to be y'all we do not need to be outside of this covering we need to be covered hallelujah because this is a time this is this is like um jonah 
Hallelujah. This is like Jonah. This is every freaking story. This is Jonah. This is Noah and the ark. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is um, Sodom and Gomorrah. Hallelujah. This is um, um, the parable of the banquet. Hallelujah. When those people were um, invited to the um, banquet. Hallelujah. And some of them didn't even want to come. Hi, Haley. How y'all doing? I hope y'all good. Let's see. Um, hallelujah. Um, hardship and stress. Hallelujah. I ask and I pray, boss, boss twin. Hallelujah. I ask that God releases um, his comfort. He releases his peace and his understanding to your situation. And he speaks to those dry and dead bones in your situations and they come to life. Hallelujah, that your eyes shall be awakened and your ears shall be awakened in this hour. Hallelujah. And you find the love of God more than anything. You find the love of God, the peace that surpasses all of your circumstances. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, so let us go to Psalms 91. And I'm reading out the Bible because because my um the actual physical Bible, which I love. I love my pink Bible, y'all. I love pink. As y'all see, I got a whole pink shawl. Like, I need a blue and white one too. But um, my internet is like slow. Let me see. So I'm opening up the Bible. I think that's um, very um, prophetic, actually. So I'm going to just try it one more time. But once I open up the Bible, it's just all fire. It's just fire. Hi. hi, Hey, Deara. How you doing? It's just all fire once I get into this word. So we need it. We need to be in the physical Bible at this time. Obviously, that's what the Father is saying. So let's go. I'm going to go to Psalms 91 to start this thing off. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Psalms 91. We've been reading this all week. And it's so exciting. The more you read it, the more revelation you come into. You can never read scripture too many times. Because the word, which is a difference from scripture. I, I did a word about how scripture and the word are different. The word is what you need to interpret scripture. That's why a lot of people take scripture and do evil with it because they have no interpretation because they don't have the word. They don't have the covering. They don't have the father. Hallelujah. You need the word to interpret scripture. You need the word to gain wisdom and understanding of what God is saying because the word is literally the mind of God. The word is literally Christ. Hallelujah. Let's go to Psalms 91. We thank you, Jesus, for this day that is all of you and none of me and that I'm a yielded vessel for your glory, for your people. Hallelujah. So the captives can be set free. Hallelujah. So the chains can be broken. So many chains are being broken in this hour. God is raising up so many Josephs. Oh, that's so heavy on my heart. So much Josephs, Josephs, Josephs. And he do want me to recommend that y'all literally look at the movie Joseph. The cartoon is a good movie too. Whichever one you want to look at, I'm gonna share it again on my um Facebook. But look at Joseph, because that's the time we're in. And look at the Prince of Egypt. The Prince of Egypt. That's what we're in. We're literally since 2020, really, it's been plagues and plagues. You see all the bugs and stuff around your houses. We are literally living in the plagues because um America don't want to repent. Well, what do we suppose to us expect? We do not suppose to be surprised when hurricanes come. We have been saying these things for months and years, since 2020. I know you guys have felt the shift. It's different. I'm here preaching the gospel. It's different. People that are, are coming to Christ that ain't never been to Christ. <laughs> so you think God is coming back this year? No. We have a lot of work to do. He is not coming back this year. But in the sense, yes, in the spirit. So, okay, with that whole coming back, right? Um, one of my friends on here, one of my sisters, she she gave us some great revelations about the um star, the stars that she was seeing, and it represented Jacob and the coming back of God and his righteous judgment. As we see, we are under his righteous judgment because his righteous judgment is the thing that is coming back, and it comes back over and over and over again until the really of the end time. So, yeah, he's coming back this year, and we're in it. Okay, you're either on his uh, his righteous right hand or his um um his his wrath. So he's here. Do that make sense to you? And it happens over and over. Why? Because the people worship false gods. This is the same story. We're we're living in Solomon and Gomorrah. We're living in when when Adam and Eve sinned and they were kicked out of the covering, out of the garden. 
It's the same thing, y'all. That's why people are like, oh, when is God coming back? You know, everybody died at different times. Some people are not going to wake up tomorrow. He came back for sure for them. You get what I'm saying? No, it's not too late to repent. As long as you have breath in your body, you, ha you have time to repent. If you have breath in your body, now is the time. That means that is a scripture that says God always makes an escape. Okay? So if you have breath, and it's also a scripture that says let everything that has what? Breath. Praise ye the Lord. Your breath is a gift. A gift to give to God and go to repent. It's not too late to repent. Don't let the enemy trip you up. If you own this live, repent now. Do you want to? Do you want to turn away to, um, from your sins and to the Lord? And that's not meaning that you're perfect. It's meaning that you're turning to the Lord in your sins. And you're saying, Lord, come, in, um, come inside of me and lead me and guide me. And you run into the Father. Have you heard of the story of the prodigal son? That's what the, pro the prodigal son did. He was filthy and he turned to his father and came home. And his father cleaned him up, had a good grand party for him. That's all he wants from you right now. That's all that judgment is, y'all. Judgment literally doesn't come to just um, uh, make people feel bad and just like, oh, you're going to hell and you're, you're just doomed forever. No, judgment is for the refinement of the church. It's for the purification of the church. It's for your sake. You know, we are a people that have to go through things so that we can see the good. We are a people that has to go through things so that we can be humbled by the Lord and so that we can serve him. In 2020, I was so far off. I was so comfortable. That's why the rich man couldn't get into the into heaven because we are comfortable in our flesh. Why would we serve a Lord if we don't think we need him? Hallelujah. So he, 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 he allows these things to come so that we can go back to the father. Because he don't control us. It's just like with the prodigal son. Let's go back to the prodigal son. The prodigal son didn't know what he had until he left what he had. He didn't know he had a good thing at home until he left it. And spent all of his inheritance and realized, oh my gosh, the real world, the um, real world sucks. The real world do not love me. It gives me nothing but hate. Why am I eating with the filthy pigs? And I have a, a father at home who loves me and I, and who is rich. We gotta go through that. So the purification, I mean, the judgment is for the people. It's for you to come and back home to the Lord. Understand these things. I had to go through that in 2020, and this is another 2020, but on 10,000. I keep saying that. It's another 2020, but on 10,000. Some people, some people, um, you know how people have to, um, they don't learn about others. They got to go through it. They got to go through it. And God gave me this dream because I was praying for my family. We didn't even get to um, Psalms, Psalms 91, but we just let the Holy Spirit flow. Don't mind my lips. I'm, I'm, I'm minding it because I'm keeping. I mean, this is just bothering me. And I don't have no wipes. Okay. What was I saying? I'm so, I'm so sorry. Jesus, Lord, help me. Hallelujah. Even if your um your heart is pure, the most unexpected stuff will happen to you regardless. What do you mean by your heart being pure, though, brother? What do you mean by that? I need, I need to understand. What's up, Jay? Hope you're doing good. I hope you're doing well. Hope you're okay. It's okay or... Is it okay just move righteously and be sure to have a overly religious spirit? I'm not sure what you're saying, um, Taby. Can you explain that a little more? Hallelujah. Where was I at, y'all? Can y'all please type in where was I at? Because I was going somewhere and I kind of messed up. But hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father God, please Lord remind me in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. I'm telling them that having fun is dangerous. How do you repent? That is so good. I'm glad you asked that because I lost it. Hi, Sister Carolyn. Okay, so how do you repent? Repentance is literally turning in a new direction, turning the opposite direction. It's really turning the opposite direction of where you come from. Because you know what? Where do we come from? People say we come from heaven, but we really don't. We come from God. We literally come from the inside of God. Just like God spoke a word from the inside of him and, and, and it manifested. That's literally where we come from. So we come, we, we broke that, um, we turned around from God when we sinned in the garden. We turned into a, a, a world full of sin and deceit and flesh. So we're just walking away, like constantly walking away. 
Now, repentance looks like you're literally just doing a roundabout and turning back to the Father. Now, how does that look even more on a deeper note? That looks like you're surrendering, you're surrendering the things that you love on, in this world. You're surrendering your vision, your ideas, your goals, your family, your love that you want. And you're saying, God, even if you don't um, help me out of this fire, I'm going to serve you because I know that your will is greater than mine. It's like the Hebrew boys. That's what repentance looked like. Oh, my gosh. Whew. Let's go to that story. The three Hebrew boys were in the fiery furnace. And they said that I know that who my God is, so I know that he will rescue me from the fiery furnace. But even if he don't, that was surrender. Repentance looked like surrender. Even if he don't, I will not bow down. I will constantly, continuously walk to him, stay covered in him, stay under him, let him um, live in me and be in agreement with God. Sometimes you have to go to a desperate place to um, literally really experience repentance. Hallelujah. Sometimes you have to get to a desperate place. That's where I had to be. That's where many of us have to be. And that's why the um, plagues come. That's why the plagues come. We go back to Pharaoh. We go back to Pharaoh in Egypt. Now, all of those plagues were why? Because he didn't repent. He kept hardening his heart. He kept, he loved the things of this world. Hallelujah. Hey, sister. Hey, I'm happy to see you tonight. So God will send something to soften that heart, to, to let you know that you do need to be, depend on God. He will send something to make your idols fall. Literally, what is a hurricane? What is a hurricane? It is wind to make what? Things fall. Trees fall. Houses fall. Everything around us falls. God. So this is what that is. God is tearing down our idols. In the Bible, we see this over and over. The people will worship the the um not the blesser but the the gifts that he gives them not the um the giver but they will bless the the gifts that god gives them and guess what god will make those gifts falls whether he take a family member whether he take your health whether he take your job your money your finances whatever idol you have the man the woman why does he do this because he's a jealous god you belong to him you are married to him and you are a cheater, adulterous nation, adulterous woman, men too. You are adulterous woman. You are adulterous bride, you men. You are Proverbs 7, you men. I, I'm emphasizing men because I don't, you, you're not, a lot of men, well, I'm going to, well, yeah, don't have that understanding. That Proverbs 31 is not only for the women, it's for the men. Because we are the bride of Christ. We are the wife of Christ. He is our head. Not just for the women. That's why you cannot understand love. And you feel like the world is against you. Because you don't have the understanding of the Lord. This is what the Lord is stressing in this hour. He is pouring down his wisdom and understanding. He is rising up many who have been in the secret place. Depending on him. And he is exposing others and making them fall. Why? Not just so they can stay there. So they can repent. And the cycles keep going. This is the time. The cycles just keep going. This is the whole Bible. Do y'all know the whole Bible is a book of the same story over and over so we can get it? Genesis is the same as Revelations. Hallelujah. This is so, oh my gosh. Okay, so let's get into Psalms 91 finally. Unless y'all have any more questions. He literally already knows your heart anyway. He just wants you to talk to him about it. He'll help you if you come to him. Hallelujah. Okay, so let's go to Psalms 91. Facebook, Facebook, Facebook. I'm glad I'm, I'm um, on live on Facebook because I, I don't get to go on live on Facebook as much as I want to. So Psalms 91. And I'm reading out of, I don't even know what version this Bible is. Oh, NIV. Yeah. NIV. And it reads, Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. 
my God in whom I trust. Hallelujah. Surely he will save you from the fowler snare and from the deadly pestilence. Hallelujah. My God. <sighs> Jesus. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. My God. Hallelujah. His faithfulness will be your shield. Hallelujah. And rampart. My God, doesn't this feel so good to know that God fights for us when we're covered? Hallelujah. And that's another thing, brother. Whoever asked me about repentance, God gave me this revelation. That repentance is literally your armor. The fear of the Lord. That's how you repent. You fall in love with Jesus and you fear losing him. So you don't put the things that you love in the world over him. Because it's a relationship. It's just like your husband. Just think of your wife or your husband, somebody you truly love, right? And something is getting in the way of your relationship, right? Now, if you truly love this person, you're going to do whatever you can to let that thing that you love go. Because why? It is destroying your intimacy. God, put us in position. Hallelujah, Nia. Put us in position where only can call on him. Hallelujah, man, my God. He is so merciful and loving. God calls even the storm that, that he sent. <laughs> it turns us to him. Hallelujah. It turns us to him. We be needing it. I'm not going to lie. That was a prayer that God had um, gave me to pray for people. That's why I, <laughs> I, I don't. Bro, I have to be led to pray for people. And we got to. Okay, we always pray for people. Well, we got to know how to pray for these people. Because God will literally tell you just to stop praying for somebody. Because you're messing up their blessing. Oh my gosh, he want me to talk about it. Look at Pharaoh. Look at Pharaoh. Pharaoh, Moses is, is over here. A, a prophet of the Lord. A messenger. He goes and tells Pharaoh, let my people go. That's what the Lord is saying. Pharaoh is hardening his heart every time. On his own. You have to read it with understanding of the Lord. Because a lot of little Hebrew Israelites want to get on here and say, oh, why would God, why would you serve a God who, who, um, let, who hardens people's heart and then he let them go to hell? I'm not going to keep explaining y'all the same thing. So Pharaoh is hardening his heart, right? Just imagine, and, 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 and what God sends. He sends plagues. He sends hurricanes. He sends bees and flies, everything. Oh, I know. I told my mama that I know flies are in hell. I know flies ain't in heaven. I don't know about you. I hate a fly and I hate a roach. Them are plagues. That's why. They know our, our flesh hate that. We hate them. But he sends those plagues, right? Because Pharaoh kept hardening his heart. Now, just imagine the people of God who were covered in the plagues was praying for Pharaoh's protection. You're literally going against the Lord. What if the people of God... You're going to get blocked, boss man twin, if you keep it up. You're going to get blocked one more time. I love to block people, so I'm warning you. All right, so um, what if the people of God were praying for Pharaoh's covering, to be covered by God? They will literally be in the way of God's purpose because God's purpose was to, um, to soften Pharaoh's heart. Hallelujah. So that is what we're saying. We have to understand who to pr how to pray. How to pray. And one, one go-to is just a repentance. We just all need to just constantly be in repentance. We all need to humble ourselves. Um, I wrote down the scripture that is for this. Hallelujah. You always pray that God has his will. Yes. Because his ways are what? Higher than our ways. We be thinking like, because we be, we be hindering. We be hindering the people of God. Our family, even. Definitely our family because we be feeling bad. Because we be feeling bad. So, but that's that flesh. We gotta we gotta be in um, God's will. Allow your will to be done. Hallelujah. Mercy, mercy. I heard the scripture the other day. I was uh asking Google. I was asking Google if God could unharden a cold, cold heart. But here's the thing: you have to want your heart to be um unhardened. Do y'all know some people don't want that? And it's hard to understand because it's like, dang, it's a free gift. If I don't have to go to hell, I'll... <laughs> Bro, I seen this video that I was I was cracking up. And I, I'm glad that brother did. It was a, a little gay dude. 
somebody was interviewing him and asked him, did he want this free salvation? He said, I mean, if I don't got to do nothing for it, then he, of course not. Why would not? It's a whole saying, you know how people don't believe in heaven or hell, but like, I mean, what are we losing? I might as well. But some people do not want the covering. They reject it. And guess what? God is not a manipulator. A, manip a manipulator would control that thing into doing what he wants it to do. He gives you a, 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 a choice. Of course, he sends things. He don't, he's not willing for anyone to perish. So he sets things up. Your, your life, your life um, is literally set up for you to turn back to the Father. But some people still are hardened. And you know what that means? They are, their father is the devil. That's why he told those um, boys in the gospel. Jesus said that your father is truly the devil. The father of lies. You got to pick a side. At the end of the day, God will help you. He will have mercy. But some people just don't want it. Listen carefully what you ask God. Hallelujah. Um, and the minute you ask God, we'll send you all the battles that will make you want to keep your heart hard. Hold on. Let me go back because I I am who I am. You said you always pray that God and his will be done. Okay. Then you said whatever God wants, you need to touch and agree. Everything works together for the greater. Everything works together for the good of those who love the Lord. Do you know what that means? That means who are obedient. It don't work together if you're out here sinning and rejecting God, period. You might have mercy in that situation, but at the end of the day, if you don't love the Lord, it ends to death and destruction. He already told us that. If you eat off the tree of death, guess what? You are what you eat. Why would you want to keep your heart hard? I'm not understanding I am who I am. I'm not understanding where you're coming from. You need to ask God for wisdom and understanding. You need to ask God. You Those pray, people that say, listen, um, be careful what you ask God. What is y'all talking about? Y'all just hear other people saying stuff. What you mean? You should want to go through those battles so you can become better. Why would you want to settle constantly? You... Even in, in successful business, everybody who know who has been successful, you play the sport, um, um, you, you're on a debate team, um, you, you have a child. Delayed gratification is hard at first. What the hell is y'all talking about? That stuff make me mad. What are you talking about? You got to be careful what you ask the Lord. Okay? He sends you some tough things. Get over it and go through them. Guess what? Depend on him through it. That's the whole point of it. God, y'all don't want to go through nothing. This generation. I misunderstood. Okay. Your patience. You got to know that God is training you in the obstacle. Okay. I'm happy I misunderstood. But that was for somebody else. I am who I am. Because people do ask those questions. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. I get it. It's hard. It's hard. You only you only texting. You you writing and stuff. <laughs> that was that was just to show somebody I am not God. Okay, so don't act like I'm God. God is God. Hallelujah. All right, Psalms ninety one. Sabbath. I, I'm I'm still not even in the message, y'all. But I'm in the message at the same time. Okay, so he will cover you with his feathers. Hallelujah. And under his wings, you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. Hallelujah. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness. Hallelujah. Nor the plagues that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You only observe with your eyes. You see the punishment of the wicked. If you say, the Lord is my refuge, and you make the most high your dwelling, no harm will overtake you. My God. No disaster will come near your tent, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. I'm going to finish this. They will lift you up in their hands. So that you will not strike your foot against the stone. Hallelujah. Verse 13. You will tread on the lion and cobra. Hallelujah. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. 
because he loves me, says the Lord. I will rescue him and I will protect him. Hallelujah. For he acknowledges my name. He will call on me and I will answer him. Hallelujah. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with long life. I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. I would suggest that everybody read this day and night. Read this day and night. Hallelujah. Read this day and night. Because this is something good. I said this the other day. This is something that the enemy used against Jesus. God really want us to um, look into that. The enemy even know his power in Psalms 91. He told Jesus, um, what was this one? Um, surely you will not strike your foot against the stone. Because the angels will protect you. He knows Psalms 91 is powerful and he tried to twist this. So I would suggest that everybody read Psalms 91. Okay, so what God wanted to talk about, the prince of Egypt, I'm just going to go over it first and then I'm going to dive deep in it, everything that we're talking about. And I'm going to take my covering off, just a second, because it is keep on, but I love my little covering. It's so cozy. And I got this from Amazon. Okay, from a little small business in Israel. Okay, oh. And um, I have a um, a video about Psalms 91. So many videos on my TikTok uh, and on YouTube. I suggest you listen to it because I break down Psalms 91. That's why I'm not doing it tonight. But we go deeper inside inside Psalms 91 for people who don't understand or, or just need more. So the Prince of Egypt, I'm going to talk about um, Prophet Tiffany um, Montgomery. I don't know if you ever heard of her, but... I was led to watch the Prince of Egypt, I want to say a, bit, uh, a few weeks ago, because I seen it on Netflix, right? And then after that, I seen Tiffany, Prophet Tiffany, talk about the spirit of Egypt. And that's what we're heading to. And this was before the hurricanes and all that stuff. This is probably like a week ago. And so this is literally the times we're in with that. Um, Joseph the movie, because we are literally, the famine has started. That's what God had told me. The famine has started. We talked, I did a video about a famine in um, April during the um, solar eclipse and at the end of the year last year in December. Um, something like that. Okay, so Revelation, the end times, we're in the thousand year reign. Hallelujah. And this is why the PDD situation is a symbol of the enemy being locked away for a thousand years so that God's people will reign. Now, the thing is, when the enemy is locked away for the thousand years, everybody who chooses the enemy will also be locked away for, for a thousand years. What does that mean? They will live in lack. They will live, live in struggle. They will be in a humble state. Hallelujah. So this is a time to rejoice if you are in the Lord. And it's a time to stay close to the Lord. It's a time to pray and be in repentance and fast. It's a time to have mercy and self-reflect truly. Know where you stand with God. There's not no time to be deceived by your by your actions. Knowing that is God's works and not you doing it. Hallelujah. Okay, so this is the time to leave Egypt. And that's why I told that brother, no, it's not too late to repent. God is calling. He, he, he don't want nobody to perish. He don't want nobody to miss out on his blessings. It, 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 it does his name say good. It does his name good when you are living in your true calling, in your true purpose, when you are aligned to him and with him. What if I'm still living in sin? It, it, that's cool. We all fall short from the glory of God, but don't practice it. You know what I'm saying? Don't practice it, meaning you are convicted. You must be convicted because you said, what if you're still living in sin? You ask God to help you with that sin. And you don't focus on that sin, you focus on the Father. Why? Because in your progression, in your walk with God, God will perfect you. And that sin will fall off. So it's okay. We all fall short. Hallelujah. You good. Just keep on reading your word. Keep on listening to um, the, the word, to scripture. Feeding that, that um, spirit man. You have to go through inertia. It's a, a theory called inertia. Science back up the word of God. I always say this. Science back it up. It's a theory called inertia. What stays in um what stays at a resting place remain. And what stay what, what stays in motion, what is in motion remains in motion. So that means that 
when you are at rest, the ob the um, object that is stopping you, the force or whatever it is that is stopping you, is stopping you only because you are too small. So you don't have the energy. Um, you don't have the anything to to push that thing off. So you can get big or get by it. But as long, but when you start to build up that spirit, man, you you grow, you grow bigger and bigger. And then that little option, um, that object in front of you becomes small. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, so um, time to leave Egypt. This is the wealth transfer. I know y'all been hearing about the wealth transfer. I mean, we've been in this thing. <laughs> I, I see even on this walk i mean i have fallen short um with the glory of god i've been hearing god talk about this trans uh, this world transfer since 2020 and i'm just like okay okay but now looking back i see it because it's more than just um physical money it's a wealth transfer of spiritual things and wisdom and understanding and ideas and creativity this is the wealth transfer and because now we know that we're really in it because the famine has started. Because we look back in, at the Pharaoh, the, the story about Pharaoh and um, Moses. When did the famine start? When the plague start, um, started? When the weather started being crazy and acting strange? When there was a day of um, plagues and total darkness? Y'all look at um, the Prince of Egypt so y'all can see what them plagues. It's 10 plagues. Okay. Um, let's see what else he says. 91, I said, I told you guys, 91, Psalms 91 is the re repentance prayer. It's the repentance prayer, literally. Um, now, evaluate to the north. I want to do more studying on here, or I just ask God to leave me on here, because this is so symbolic and it's powerful. Have y'all ever thought about it? When people are enslaved, they always tend to want to escape their, their bondage by traveling, evacuating to the north. And if you think about Christmas, what do the, um, people say Santa lives in? He lives in the North Pole. It's something about that North. And God has shown me that the North represents God's rest. It represents God's freedom and prosperity. Oh, and then you got to do, a, uh, I'm going to do a, uh, another study about the winds. I had did a message, I want to say in May, I got to look at it over, probably in like April, about the winds. Because certain winds, depending on where they come from, if you got a wind blowing from the west and the east, it's different. Some winds bring judgment. Some winds bring prosperity. And it depends on the person, too. It could be the same wind coming, but different angles, depending on who you are and where you are in Christ. So some people are going to experience exposure, and some people are going to experience um, being risen and elevated and things of the Lord, having businesses and families and flourishing and multiplying and, and, and greatness. Hallelujah. But I didn't, I, I didn't do a deep study, but see, look, and even with um, God had led me to the Wiz, he talks to me through movies, through dreams, through visions. He led me to the Wizard of Oz. And I seen that, and I'm going to do an analyst, because God, he loves to um, teach me about with science. Um, he loves to show, like, bridge the gap between science and the word and scripture. And I, I swear I ain't like science before Jesus. This is all the Lord. It's not no demonic stuff or none. It's just the shows that y'all be talking about the same thing, but different languages. You know how God said, I will confuse the languages. Like scientists be literally <laughs> bagging up the word of God and they don't believe in the Lord because we, we use different terms, terminology. We got to understand the words too and what they mean. So we got to do a study. We got to be a people. It says study to show, show yourself approved. We cannot rely. You can't even rely on this message. You got to go back. You got to study. Get you a strong concordance. I'm actually, I don't have the book, the strong concordance. But I just seen somebody with the book, the strong concordance. I said, oh boy, I'm about to get that. I've been seeing that, but now I see it, see it. So I, I know it's God telling me to get the book. Because I usually do it on the um, internet. And who knows? The internet might not be working. You need that strong concordance in a book. We need to study. And how do we become a people that study? You go, go to God. He gives you a spirit of curiosity. Asking questions is never dumb in the kingdom. Those are the greatest people in the kingdom. The ones who are curious about, oh, well, how does God, how does God uh, minds work? And how does his heart work? And what are his patterns? How do he talk to Moses? And how did he talk to Esther or through them? Or We got to be those type of people. Hallelujah. And we are. He is rising us so that people in the world is going to look at us in awe. And want to glorify our God because we're going to be intelligent and move in power and move in dominion, but love at the same time. You get me? Hallelujah. 
He is calling us too fast. I'm starting a fast tomorrow. I was not trying to. This ain't me. This is Jesus. Because I did not want to fast at all. But he is calling us to fast. And however you want to do it, however you can do it, uh, you can do a three-day uh, three fast. You can do a three-day full fast. You can do a, uh, with no, a dry fast with no food or water. You can do it with water. You can do it with fruits if you if you can't do the thing with water. You can do it at certain times. Fast from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. I'm going to make a um, flyer or something because I think that's what I'm going to do. Because that's um, somebody I learned from. She do it. And I, I trust her teachers. I love how I love how that it, it, it helps. Even if it's intermittent fasting. It really does. Because that time frame where you're not eating, you're building up your spirit man. And it's not just a regular fast. This is a fast of a repentance. And we're going to Daniel. Daniel repented on the behalf of the people. He didn't just say, oh, you guys just pointing the finger. But he did tell them. You know, he told them, what's up? Hey, y'all need to repent. But then he, he went in a secret place too. Because he know that he falls short from glory. He said, I'm a sinner. I repent on, from the ancestors on back. And I repent on the behalf of the people. That's what we're doing. You have scriptures I can read for details for the... I'm going to get all of that, okay? Loyal. And I'm a... Let me screenshot too, so I can send it to you personally. But I'm going to post it on my stories, and I'm going to post it on my TikTok. I'll make a video right after this. Because I got to make a flyer real quick once I get off live. This all last minute. This all God. So, starting at 6 a.m. So, we got time. You want to eat some right now? Go ahead and eat some. If you are fasting. If you are, Yeah. God already called us to fast, so I don't, see, I don't believe in, oh, if God leading me to fast, he already led you to fast. It's all throughout the scripture. He already called us to fast all throughout the scripture. Hallelujah. Okay, so, I already talked about Pharaoh. He was talking about, you can't, um, you can't cover Pharaoh because Pharaoh chose to leave the covering. <laughs> The covering don't leave, the covering is in the same spot waiting on that person to come back. It's like, it's literally the prodigal son story. The prodigal son left his covering. The house is the covering. Did the house move? No. The house, the father, it was there waiting. Waiting on the son to come back home. You can't save nobody who want, who don't want to be saved. Y'all know what J. Kelly will say. He, he actually was right. You cannot, I like, I say this, you can't save a damsel who loves her distress. See, I'm surrounded out by people. I know the struggle. I was just like that. I have family members that love toxicity. It doesn't matter how much I prove to them that God is real. If they don't want to be saved. Have you heard of, oh, an addict cannot get help unless they admit that they're an addict and need help? This is how you repent. I hope that brother is on. Living waters. This is what helped me when I was in the when I was in the dungeon. I mean, demons were literally talking to me, and I'm thinking that they're people because I didn't understand demons knew how to speak English. And I didn't know nobody who casted out demons. And the people that did, they said, Oh, God said we we don't pull, I don't pose to talk to you. <laughs> that I, I was in that situation where people could not even pray for me. Because God wanted me to depend on him. Because I had so many idols. I mean, I reached out to every pastor in America, I feel like. That, so they can help me cast these dang on demons out. Because I'm about to die. I, I lost my mind. And it struck me when the pastor, I thought I had the hope in. He said, God is telling me not to leave you alone. I said, what? I just knew I was dead after that. Yes, just keep trying. If you mess up, you got to keep going. Just keep going. Hey, but I heard something so deep. Y'all ain't going to believe who I heard it by. Just a little snippet. Who was that? What's his name? Who in jail now? A little rapper. A little dark skin rapper. Uh, Yachty. Nah. He got the little locks. He was like blind. Dreads. What is that man? Now he sung that best friend song. What else he sung? Ski. Dang, I can't think of his name. He's a rapper. But he said, if you're tired of um starting over, don't quit, bro. Change my whole perspective. We can't we gotta stop giving up. 
If you keep starting over and you tired of starting up over, stop quitting. That's why you tired of starting over. You keep quitting. But even if you quit, don't give up. <laughs> All right. Um, can't cover. Yep. All right. Now, there's a few more. The weed and the tears. Now, I'm going to repost this video that I did in February about the separation of the weed and the tears. So let me go into the dream that God gave me, that, that God given me for this. And this, and this is literally from months ago. So this is just Holy Spirit going to help me with this because I, I didn't go back to it. So the dream that I had, I was being chased. I wasn't being chased. I was, I was next to a, a friend of mine. I wonder will he see this. He was a symbol in his dream. His name is Devorio. I grew up, I grew up with Devorio, right? He went to my high school. So he was in a dream, right? And this other prophet of the Lord by the name of Jalen, I used to watch him a lot and learn from him. His name is Jalen. And he was coming to me and was like, bow, bow, shooting at DeVario, trying to get him away from me. And I was confused in a dream because I'm like, dang, DeVario, my friend. And then I was a little weirded out because why is he still like sticking on me, right? He was like, everywhere I go, he was trying to stick to me. But Jalen was trying to shoot DeVario. And he was telling me to get away from him. And then he said that he killed my sister, right? And so this next scene, me and DeVario, we're in the car. DeVorio is driving, right? And he on my left side. I'm in the um the passenger seat. So DeVorio on my left side and Jalen Bow, he's shooting up the car. And I had to literally hop out the car to save my life. I'm going to stop there. So what God was telling me in that dream. Hey, TikTok, let me know if y'all can hear me because I be saying too much every time I get restricted for saying something. I don't pose to say the K, the K word. Or the S word. Let me know if y'all hear me. Because I got two two restrictions. Okay, bet. I, I got to remind myself what not to say on here. They will literally restrict. I got so many restrictions. Okay. Um, so, okay. In that dream, God literally was telling me. Oh, Amos 8. We're going to have to go to Amos 8. But he separated the wheat from the tares. And he was telling me this for the body of Christ. This was not even for um, worldly people or whatever you want to call. This was literally for the lukewarm Christians and the Christians that really love the Lord. Because we know that judgment comes to the church first. So he was literally telling me that. You are guilty by association. And that's what I named that, um, that, that teaching. You are guilty by association because the Wario means poison. And it was a scripture that he went, he, he gave me, just look up a scripture in Amos that, that talks about poison. And it talks about how God wrath comes to an entire house. So it doesn't matter if you're innocent, if you're serving the Lord, or if he told you to get away from somebody, you better get away because you're, that, that wrath going to come on you too because you're connected to that person. If you're under a, a false teacher or a false leader and you're sowing to that seed or whatever you're doing, that judgment is going to come near you. You. This is why we have to have discernment on who we allow in our circle and, and our proximity. You know, just like God. Everybody can't be as close to God as, as certain people can. Because he knows that bad company corrupts good character. So that was that entire story was about separating the wheat from the tares. And we've seen that this happening now. But it's going to happen on 10. And their, their poison is leaking over on you. You know? Because it's hard. It's easy to revert back. That's why I remember like even when um, I, God had to change my circles. It was so easy for me to start back. I remember um, when I was a first uh, a babe in Christ, I was hanging out with my old friends. And it was so easy for me to go back to drinking. I didn't even want to drink. But it, all that peer pressure, it was just like, it was so easy. So it's really, it be us, you know that. But he's separating the wheat from the tares. That was that for that whole, and it was a judgment. It was about judgment and how he is rising those people who have been in a secret place. And he's exposing those people. Who have not. And those shots represent the word of God. 
And you know, the word of God can mean so many things in one thing at one time. Like the shots represented God's wrath, but also the shots represents the word of God chasing that person down so that they can come into repentance and understanding that they need the Lord. It can mean so many things. We got to understand spiritual things is crazy. He is so merciful and a loving God. I pray God rescue us when we generally turn it over to him. I mean, you don't have to pray that. You just got to know that. It's principles. You know, I'd be like, that's a principle. It's facts. It's facts. God's words never lie. It cannot come back void. That's scripture. It says his, his word cannot return back void. We don't have to pray. We know. If you, if you sow a good seed, it's going to multiply. That's faith. You already know. Because we know his character. We know his patterns. That's why we have to read the word. Read the word more. You, you, it's gonna, you're going to um, build your faith more and more. You're going to understand like, you know what? I already know this is principle. So if I, if I sow this good seed, I'm, I'm going to reap back a good harvest. Because that's what my father said. It's a promise. It's not only a, po a promise. God made a covenant. Hey, y'all need to follow uh, Prophet Tiffany. She breaks this stuff down even she she breaks this stuff down good. She's been a Christian for over a decade now, following the Lord. But a covenant is a promise that could not be broken. God made a covenant with you, brother. And if you align with God's covenant, those promises must come to pass. Period. Because he's not a liar. He's not like us. He's not like man. He doesn't lie. Man, hallelujah. I pray you stay consistent in dwelling in God in the secret place. I pray too. I pray he do too. Hallelujah. Thank you, lawyer. We're going to declare and decree that you stay um, consistent in dwelling in the Lord. And then you're going to realize, man, his covenants are true. His promises are true and his covenant is real. We're the only ones that break covenant. We're, we're the only ones that say, say, I'm talking about, and I'm, when I say we, I'm, I'm talking about humans that say one thing and do another. God doesn't. All right. So the wheat and the tares, the uncircumcised Philistine, Philistines, um, the wedding banquet. I love this one. That's what we're going to get into. Noah's Ark. Okay. We got into the prodigal son about the covering. Um, the solar eclipse, we're going to go back to the solar eclipse and what did that represent and what all of this lead to. And I'm going to read the scripture. All of this re leads to, dang, is it Corinthians? I'm just going to read the scripture. I forgot where I got it from. Chronicles. Maybe it's First Chronicles. If my people who are called by my name shall or will humble themselves and pray and seek my face. And turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and what? Heal their land. You see that, brother? That's a promise. It got to take place. If we humble ourselves, the people who are called by God, by, by God, he will heal our land. That's why I, I just read, I just made a status about all, all the people have to do is come together. This is a great time for us to come together and repent, pray in fact. How did the people repent back in those Bible times? They will come together and they will fast. They will turn down their plates. That's how sorrowful they were. But you see, we got people still on some, on some demon time right now. These, these hurricanes ain't really messing with everybody. Some people just, just don't care. These hurricanes ain't messing with everybody. Yeah, some people waking up, but everybody's not. But just imagine all of us waking up and humbling ourselves. America will prosper in all its ways. America will truly be great again. This is how to make America great again. Hallelujah. By not agreeing with the worldly patterns. This um, election that's coming out or that's coming up is really crucial. And it's literally is going to change the, uh, everything in this world. It's going to change a lot of things, depending on who wins and who we vote for, who we come into. Because you got to think about it. Whoever you vote for, you come into agreement with. And now I'm not, I'm not standing on nobody's side. I'm not standing on Democratic side. I'm not standing on um, 
Republican side. I'm standing on the lower side, but how I'm doing that, I'm not agreeing with anybody who agree with abortion. If I'm a Christian, it's murder. Dang, they probably gonna restrict me. It's unaliving. Why don't we know this by now? We know it's wrong. My body, it's God's temple. And I'm the perfect person to talk about it because I had two before I came into the knowledge of God. People don't understand the effects that they, you enter into when you come into covenant with the enemy. You come into a death covenant when you unalive your child. You're literally killing, dang. You're literally unalive in the seed of Jesus. Of Christ. We see it over and over and over and over and over in the Bible. They always want to unalive God's seed. They always want to unalive the babies. Because the enemy knows how powerful it is. You are out here John Wicking. You are out here being a John Wick to your own destiny. It's not just affecting the, um, the little seed. It's affecting you. Because now... You have the, um, the spirit of abortion is upon your life. And now you cannot finish anything that you start. Now you cannot prosper in none of your ways. Why? Because you came in an agreement with abortion. And that's what that. The enemy is about uh, is behind that spirit. We got to stop being drunk and being drunk is just being deceived. And it's not that we don't know better. We want to be deceived. That's what it says in the word. You ask me why why, why um, God can't uh, unharden people's heart? No, they want to be deceived. They want to keep John Wicken and call it abortion. We got to look up the words. Like, that's why we got to read. People don't even, um, they go out there and get it willy-nilly because they slap a little cute word on there that, that doesn't seem as harmful. You're literally taking the seed of the Lord and, and settling for the seed of the enemy. You're literally cheating on your good and faithful husband. And coming into a marriage with a deceitful, narcissistic husband. Who leads you to nothing but death. We see it from our ancestors, Eve. Look at Cain and Abel. Abel represented the seed of God. Abel, that's a powerful name. And Cain, the seed of Chucky. <laughs> That's what it is. The seed of Chucky. Where do you think that movie come from? The seed of the enemy. It's real true. We got to stop that. We got we to gotta be a people who are stu students. And we, we, are, we are as... Um, I, I'm going to look up this scripture because it's obviously my favorite, but I always butcher it. We are as pure as doves and wise as, as serpents. We, we carry love, but we know these things. We know that we know these things that the matrix try to put on us. And it's to keep us in bondage. When you, when you come into us, and we know what type of people go and get these things. People that look like everybody on this life. That's keeping us in bondage. Keeping us dependent on them. Keeping us dependent on the enemy. Dependent on flesh. We're doing what we want to do. What? It's not your body. Who made it? What? People, I create, this is my creation. You're, you didn't create nothing. You just formed it. God already created it. It ain't about you. We got to stop being selfish. And how do we do that? Because our flesh is selfish. We got to humble ourselves. It says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, we have to decrease. Why do you think when I came on this live, I said, Lord, I decrease because I know the flesh. We got to know our flesh. We got to know our flesh want control and want to be wicked and want to be John Wick and our, our kids. Close your legs, men and women. If you struggle with that, that's cool. Go to the Father. No judgment here. I'm telling you my testimony for a reason. I had two. And it opened up a dark window in my life. It opened up the spirit of abortion. 
to where everything I touch would abort. Even if you don't realize it. See, some people really don't even realize it. You know, some people go through that and really don't have any empathy, any, any guilt because they have no conviction. Because they are so far gone <laughs> in the enemy deception that they think it don't even um, affect them. That's why in the, in the Bible said the wicked, they go out wandering in the dark, tripping over stuff, drunk. And just because you ain't drinking don't mean you ain't drunk. You ignorant. They tripping over stuff and don't know what's tripping them up. So it's a pattern. And not only a pattern, it's a worldly pattern. That's why he says, don't be conformed to the things of this, this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. You don't be conformed by your toxic ways, by your ancestors' toxic ways. That's how we learn from our ancestors. That's how you call on your ancestors. You're calling on your ancestors by learning from what they did good and what they did bad. We know that our ancestors are people who love to idolize things. We see that in, in uh, the Israel. They, they was called out of bondage, but they wanted to go back to the bondage. So we know that we have that fight. Um, um, Adam and Eve were disobedient to the Lord. So we know that we have that fight. So how do we overcome these things and stop being tripped up by the same things? That's what we need to be focusing on in this time. Hallelujah. So the solar eclipse, let me break down what that was. We know, um, I don't know if y'all seen the solar eclipse. Was y'all... Was y'all into the solar eclipse? God led me to the solar eclipse. I never was really into it um, until this year. I think I saw the one four years before this one came too, which was really cool. But God showed me through relationship with him how not to worship these things that he, he gives us. You know, like the sun, the moon, ants, different animals, just the things of this world, nature. How he gives us these things as a tool to benefit us, to point us back to him, to worship him. So he taught me about the sun and what is all symbolic. Everything. We are even symbols. You and me right here, we are symbols of bride's wife. We're, we're so many symbols. You know how God would be like, um, I am the lion of Judah or, or the serpent is like a snake or the serpent is like this. Or, or people of God is like a shepherd. We're all symbols in the story where God married himself, the body of Christ, because we enter into his body and we reside in there, covered by him. We, he's our shield. I, I went over that too. So the sun, so in the solar eclipse, let me explain what the solar eclipse was really quick. The solar eclipse was a time where the moon covers the sun in the daytime and it creates a, a shadow. It creates a, a, a pathway. It's called the, uh, the total pathway or something like that. It creates a pathway in the earth, right? And, and, and it's just a shadow because the, the moon is covering the sun from the earth. That's as best I, as I'm going to get right now, okay? So God showed me that that represented... The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit through us. It represented the Father, the Son, and us being covered by Jesus Christ, our bridegroom. Because if you think about it, we cannot come close to God without being dead. <laughs> we, cannot, we cannot come into God's presence without a covering. Hallelujah. Because without a covering, we are all dirty rags. Hallelujah. So that shadow represented God's shelter. Psalms 91. The, um, the Ark of Noah. Um, the banquet. The wedding. It represents so many um, stories in the Bible. If you get on saying. And the people that were in this shadow were protected. Why? Because they were married to Christ. They were hidden in the Lord. And so when the sun, and it's crazy, bro, y'all should look it up because this stuff is so good. Because when the sun, when the moon covers the sun, the sun can no longer see the earth. It can no longer see those people that are in the shadow, I should say. Because the moon is the covering and the moon represents Jesus Christ as the bridegroom. Hallelujah. You know how literally we're in a time where the people outside of the ark 
are getting flooded away. And when you're inside the ark, you find rest. Because inside the heart, ark is our covering. Inside the ark is God's heart. Hallelujah. I hope that makes sense. And let's go to the, to the wedding banquet. Let's go to the scripture. Because I've been talking, I know. So let's go to the wedding banquet. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let me know if y'all feeling this. I mean, understanding this. Let me know if y'all understanding this. Because this is so good. Oh, this is so good, y'all. Yes, hallelujah. This is so good. And I have so many detailed videos. Because, I mean, God was running me up like now during April. And I took a break after that. Because that's when I was getting attacked like crazy. And all this stuff is happening now. Now I've learned that I don't run away from my calling just because people don't like the message. That's the, that's the life of the prophet or the, the, the servant of the Lord, whatever you want to call it. Hallelujah. Uh, let me, um, just a second. Hallelujah. Oh, bank. I got to find this scripture. Scripture. And the wise version. This is literally the foolish versions and the wise versions. I know it's in the gospel, so let me just. Hallelujah. See, because the, the wise versions, they had their oil. They was lit up. They was lit up. Oh, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We plead the blood of Jesus. How do we plead the blood of Jesus? By getting inside of God's covering. That's the blood of Jesus. You know, like in Egypt, the plagues, how were the people of God saved? And the other people in Egypt wasn't saved. Because they were covered. They put that blood over their house. That blood represents the blood of Jesus. But they were inside of the blood. Oh, you got to be inside the blood. You got to be inside. It's just not on the top of your head. You're literally inside the blood. I just got that. Your whole body. That's why I said from the top of my head. You're literally inside the blood. Because that's your covering. That's your house. That's your shelter. Mm. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We thank you. We thank you. If somebody know where is the um, banquet scripture, please let me know. Please. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. Woo. Jesus. Jesus. Neil. Neil. Hallelujah. New things. This is a new thing. That's what Neil means. God gave me revelation about Neo. It's a, it's a tongue. That God helped me interpret is literally means neo. It means new. I mean, yeah, they hated and rejected Jesus first, literally. So if God's spirit dwells inside you, hallelujah, they will hate you too. They will. And if he Christian, I, I was thinking that was Christian. I was confused. Even though God told me you're going to be persecuted. I guess I wasn't ready for all of that. You know what I'm saying? It was just a lot. It was too much at one time. But now I am. I've been hard body, but soft heart, hard body, but soft heart. A lot of Christians, a lot of Christians hate the uh, truth. Hallelujah. Or they, they say they are Christian. Hallelujah. Hold on. Let me, let me. Jesus. Mm. Okay, there we go. Matthew 22. Jesus tells a parable of the wedding banquet, y'all. This is good. This is really good. Facebook is there. Okay. So, it reads, Jesus spoke to them again in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a king who prepared a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his servants to those who had been invited to the banquet to tell them to come. But they refused to come. Then he sent some more servants and said, Tell those who have been invited that I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and fattened cattle 
have been butchered and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they paid no attention and went off. One to his field, another to his business. The rest seized his servants, mistreated them, and killed them. We just was talking about that, right? <laughs> kill, kill God's servants. The king was enraged. My God. He sent his army and destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, the wedding banquet is ready, but those I invited did not deserve to come. So go to the street corners and invite to the banquet anyone you can find. Ooh, this is good, y'all. We gotta, we gotta turn. Let's clap for the word of God. <laughs> but we be having to turn up for the word of God because he be speaking bars. Jesus got bars. Man. The wedding banquet is ready, but those I invited did not deserve to come. So go to the street corners, invite to the banquet anyone you find. So the servants went out into the streets and gathered all the people they could. The bad as well as the good, and the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing. He was not wearing Wedding clothes. What is what is we talking about? We're talking about Psalms 91. Hey, Bishop, I'm glad you're back. We're talking about Psalms 91. I don't know if you guys was on this live, but it was on fire the other day where we was talking about Adam and Eve didn't have any clothes because they were covered by God in the garden. It was only because of they sin that they had to have physical clothes. Hallelujah. Their clothes was Jesus. Their clothes was God. That's marriage. Because when you're married, y'all know them people, my mom and daddy, they've been married for years. So I've, I've heard this. They've been married my whole life. Y'all starting to look alike. Y'all starting to talk alike. Y'all lingo alike. You walk alike. You, sm you smell alike. Because that's, in your, that's what God is calling us to agree. It's not you on the side. It's you becoming one. My God. Jesus. These, these, this person did not have on God. It don't matter how righteous he thought he was. You're filthy rags. Those clothes are filthy. <laughs> That's what he's saying. Our clothes are, is our covering. That's why he said your, your clothes are filthy rags. Because when you're not covered by God, what are you covered by? I'll tell you. Deception. Death. Defeat. The tree of death. That's everything that comes from the tree of death. Anxiety. Fear. Everything that opposes God. Rejection. Hallelujah. Lies, ashamed. He's afraid they were naked and afraid because they had on new clothes. That was the enemy clothes. Because if you don't agree with God, we are created to worship. If you don't agree with God, if you don't wear God's clothing, you're going to automatically wear something else because that's how God created you. You don't tell yourself how you was created. You were created to worship, to be married, to come into agreement, to become one with. That is why it's so important for us to lean into our father. So he's trying to sneak in, not, not in uniform. We see you. He asks, how did you get in here without wedding clothes? So this is the church, guys. Gotta be. This is the church. This is the wheat. This is the tares amongst the wheat. Trying to fit in. Queen, what are you talking about? I'm talking, okay, so we're in, um, we're in the parable of the wedding banquet. Matthew 22. If you got a Bible, you got your app, go to it. Because we're talking about the wedding banquet. And that's the time that we're in. God is inviting all, he's been inviting us all. It's a big altar call. What is an altar call, y'all? Have y'all ever thought of that? People make it so churchy. That's a marriage. What, what, where, where, um, Jagged Edge? I grew up on Jagged Edge. <laughs> Jacob is a little older, but I, I listen to that. Meet me at the altar, your wages. We ain't getting no younger. Y'all know that. Meet me at the altar. An altar is for marriage. It's for you to get married. Who are you marrying? Jesus. You're either going to the altar and marrying Jesus, or you're going to the altar and marrying death. The devil. 
You got to pick. This is why Jesus says he's a jealous God. Because the enemy is trying to steal his bride away every time. To make you a counterfeit bride. To make you a little old Jezebel. And have a little Jezebel and babies. It's always, it's just a fight. I guess, well, who husband, who you going to marry? And this go for men and women. Who you going to marry? You going to marry God or you going to marry the devil? You going to wear, wear the devil clothes or you going to wear God clothes? The devil clothes is full of shame nakedness and you're going to be afraid or you could be covered by god and experience love and peace and joy and prosperity so the man was speechless y'all then the king told the attendants tie him that he tied him and that sounded like whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven whatever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven what we do those are spirits you see, those wicked spirits are planted inside the church to confuse the church, to confuse the bride, to cause division in the bride, to make God mad. So we tie him hand and foot and throw him outside. This is literally how you cast out a demon right here. This is talking about a wicked spirit. Into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are invited, but few are chosen. They got teeth too. Do your research on that. Because I don't know. Because <laughs> that was me. Hey, but from my experience, I told you them demons were talking to me. They talk English, Spanish. They might have teeth too. They got to have teeth. They got a tongue. Because they talking. <laughs> Maybe people too, you know. Um, hell not made for people, but some people sadly going to go there. Oh, that's, that's, that's sad right there. That's, 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 uh, so, oh my gosh. So we just see here how God invited these people to the wedding. I mean, and he invited them multiple times over and over. God gives us chances over and over and over again. And he prepared a table. You just know, just, oh my gosh, I did a word about God preparing a table for you in the presence of your enemies. Hallelujah. But guess what? If you reject that table... You're not going to get that elevation. You're not going to get that recognition, um, um, that peace, that prosperity, everything that God wants for you in the presence of that of the enemy. You're going to get exposure. You're going to get humiliation. Hallelujah. Because you don't want to eat from God's table. You want to eat from the enemy's table. And they're at the table. They're at the table anyway. So you might as well join it on God to um, top, be on God top. So you can ha ha laugh. In their face, it says, he who sits in heaven laughs. We're supposed to laugh at these wicked spirits. God, this is so good. And he made a big old, just a big old lunch, dinner. And you know, and see, we got to, and see, that's why we have to be students and studious. Because in those times, the feast, the weddings lasted days. Like it was a big celebration. It wasn't just like how America just get married at one time and then it's all, you're back home. No, it's a celebration. Days and days upon days. Whew. So just imagine all the food of God and it's God's food that you're filling your belly on, that you're celebrating, that you're reclining in, in front of the enemy. Oh, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We love you, God. Hallelujah. We love you. And we just want to worship God, y'all. We want to worship God for his words that he is giving us right now in this time. And he's allowing us to be prepared. And even in this, he's still giving us a, a, a time, a, a way of escape like he always do. You might have messed up today. Oh, well, he said, come, come to me where you find rest. Jesus, he said, come to me. It's okay if you messed up today. Jesus, he is so, pa he is not like us. He is literally so patient and compassionate. And he always try to find a way for us. It's time for us to just agree with being great. With being great, with being good, with being God's child and his wife and his sheep. Let him lead you. Let him lead you. Let him use you. He won't abuse you. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Jesus. 
Okay, so we read that. Oh, do you want me to say anything else about that? God, the rest sees his servants. And then when he burnt the city down, what does that sound like? The things that we are seeing, we are witnessing, just like in Psalms 91. And we've been in that for weeks now. He says a, a thousand may fall. We're just going to witness what the evil have to go through, what the wicked have to go through. And all of us have to go through these things. All of us have to be humbled. We just, in, that, in those moments, you see, like, because I told you, I've been humbled. Man, constantly, and, and still have to get humble. I, but I, I pray that I just humble myself, because it's better if you humble yourself than to let God humble you. But it's always good if you make it through the other side, because his glory is going to show. But we all, we all have to get hum humble one to, uh, a time or another. So that's all some people have to go through right now. And we pray that the Lord have mercy so that they can get through their situation, their trial, their test, so that they can be a testimony and save the world and save others through their testimony. We can't pray that God covers people that don't want to be covered. That's the wrong prayer. That's what the enemy wants you to pray. God's coverings, covering never moved. They moved. Pray that they repent. Repenting means coming back home. The lights are on. Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you, God, for this message. And we ask that you help us to repent, Lord Jesus. Help us to repent, Father God, on our behalf. Because we have sinned and we have fallen short from your glory. We confess our sins, Father God, to you today. Search our hearts for things that are hidden. Any unforgiveness in our hearts, Father God, clean it out. Purify our hearts, creating us a new heart. Hallelujah. Help us to, get, help us to have eyes to see and ears to hear what you are saying in this hour so that we could be waiting on you hand and foot, serving you, Father God, in this hour and everything in us, staying focused on what's true, the things of the Lord, the things of you being your bride, literally being intimate with you for real, for real, and not just speaking it with our words, but it's our actions that proves that we love you. Hallelujah. We repent on the behalf of this world, this nation. Hallelujah. Let America come back to you. Let us come back to you in sackcloth and ashes, full of remorse. Hallelujah. Regretting the things that we've done to our husband, hallelujah, in his face, constantly living in sin, doing the things that oppose him, hallelujah, disagreeing with him, being an adulterous wife, a prostitute, a cheater, a liar. Help us, Father God. We repent on the behalf of our ancestors all the way from disobedience. Father God, help us to remain obedient in you. Help us to re remain covered by you. Jesus, help us to remain in covering with you. Hallelujah. Under your blood, inside of your blood, not just under your blood. We're not supposed to just be under your blood. We're supposed to be inside of your blood. Hallelujah. Jesus. Let me write that down before I forget. That's probably why your prayer is not being answered because you're thinking you're supposed to be under it and you're supposed to literally be inside of it. Inside of the blood Whew. of Jesus. I mean, that blood speaks life. It literally means life. Blood is symbolic of life. You have no life if you have no blood in you. Just imagine how lifeful God's blood is. If we're literally in that thing every day, all day. Whew. Just imagine our lives in the blood. Just imagine our lives in the blood. Just imagine our lives in the Lord. For real. Woo! Yes. Hallelujah. His spirit is upon me to set the captives free. To give the people ears to hear and eyes to see. Yes. That's what it is. The spirit of the Lord. Jesus is a double of soul of Prata. Hey, y'all, uh, his mighty, mighty presence is here. Hallelujah. I pray that he gives you a fresh wind. Fresh wind right now because he is heavy in here. He is heavy in here. Do you feel it? Hallelujah. Do you smell it? Do you sense it? Jesus is here. 
Oh my God. He is literally here. We thank you, Jesus. We humble ourselves. We are your humble servants. We love you. Hallelujah. Help us to love you. Help us to know how to love you. Help us to understand what love really is. How does it look like? How does it look like in our everyday lives? Give us the answer, Lord. You said seek and you shall find. We are seeking now. My God. That's a principle, brother. That means that we will find. My God. Woo! It's party time. Now, let us get drunk in the spirit. Drunk in the spirit where we have sweet sleep in the Lord. Sweet dreams in the Lord. Oh, what a beautiful husband to have. I know everybody be talking about my man, my man. But I say, my God, my God is my man. I mean, he's the best man to ever have. Hallelujah. The best, the best God to ever have. Jesus, he's so sweet. Jesus, he's so sweet. Whew. All right. He is lit. Hallelujah. God. He is peace. He is joy. My God. He is our food. When God says he's all that we need, he really be... For real about that. Like, he don't be capping about that. Like, we don't need anything outside of him, for real. <sighs> Jesus. Me, oh, sola grato rosa. Oh, my God. Thank you, Father God. We, I welcome your presence. I don't want you to stop. Hallelujah. I'm not going to stop. It doesn't matter who sees this live. It don't matter who stays on this live. You can just go on and do what you want to do. Because I'm staying in it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus of Nazareth, King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, Messiah. Hallelujah. Alpha and Omega, the beginning and end. Hallelujah. Day. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus is my friend. Hallelujah. Neo. Hallelujah. Brand new thing is happening. A new shift, a new wind. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for the refreshing, the refinement. Yes, we thank you, Lord. We thank you. Glory, 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 glory. Oh, that's how he want to walk. He want us to walk in holy, 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 like, like they say in heaven. I mean, they're worshiping every second. Their whole breath, their whole body, their whole being is, is built for worshiping the Lord every second. That's what we need to be in right now. Not worrying about anything. Not worrying about our days. Not even worrying about our court, brother. Stop worrying about those things. He do not want you to worry about it. He just wants you to worship and cry out, holy, holy, holy. We think it is the wrong things. Is a snare, is a trap. Every time you think of the wrong things, every time we take our eyes off of, off of the Lord, is a trap. Is an ensnarement. Is an ensnarement. Hallelujah, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I, I don't know. I love calling him Jesus Christ of Nazareth because they said what good can come out of Nazareth? The only thing that could save the world. Hallelujah. He says that he uses the foolish things to shame the wise of the world. Hallelujah. He's going to use you guys if you lean into the Father. Hallelujah. The foolish things of the world shall become wise in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. The least shall become the greatest in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Press into him in this hour. And you're going to see a big old fruit bowl from that. You're going to reap a good reward if you keep on pressing. If you keep on falling, get back up. It says that a righteous man falls six times, seven times. He gets back up. Go to the Father when you feel unworthy. Go to the Father when you are sick. I don't care if you're on your deathbed. Go to the Father. Go to the Father when you feel rejected. Go to the Father when you masturbate it. Go back and run to him. Don't run away from him. These people in the Bible was terrible. We see that. Some of the terrible, they done the most terrible things. But guess what? He called them great. The ones who were honest with him, who ran to him. He helped them with their problems. He helped them overcome the things of this world. 
Ah, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I swear I love the Lord, bro. Oh my gosh. I mean, goodness. Whoo. He's a lot at all. Neo, he a body star. Hallelujah. Jesus of Nazareth, Christ of all wasted Osta. He a body star of Rato Rosa. Neo, he a body star of Rato Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Woo. He not let me stop. I use honorable all that stuff out of this stuff. Y'all, I'ma just go. Neo, sa. Oh, eba sola grata de sa. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Dio. We thank you. We honor you, Lord Jesus. We honor you, Lord Jesus. You are worthy. Hallelujah. Thank you for covering us. Hallelujah. No wicked spirit, no witch, no warlock can enter into your covering. Hallelujah. No arrows of the night, no pestilence of the night, midday, wherever they try to strike, shall come near us. Hallelujah. We shall not fall because we are standing on a firm foundation, which is Jesus Christ. His name is powerful. I don't know who told you that it ain't. They lied to you if they did. His name is power. Not powerful, but power. When you speak the name of God, you speak power. Hallelujah. You become these things when you are inside of Christ. You are now healing. You are now deliverance. Hallelujah. What did Peter say? What I have for you is something greater to the beggar on the street who wanted money. He didn't say what God had. He said what he had because he was inside of God and God was inside of him. So if God is love, that means that you are love. If God is healing, that means you are healing. Why? Because you guys are one. Now, it doesn't mean that if you come out of alignment, you're still that way. But if you are one, meaning you are obedient to God, you are married to God. God, we got to speak these things. We got to know who we are. We are powerful beyond meaning because we worship a powerful and beyond meaning type of God. Jesus. Jesus. Yes, Yeshua. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord. We need you. We honor you today. You are worthy. We want to crowd to the streets. The Lord is our Savior. Cry out today, y'all, wherever y'all going. Cry out to the people and tell them that the time is now. It is a beautiful time to be on the Lord's side. Pick a sign. You were created to win. Be a winner. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus of Christ of Nazareth. We thank you. We honor you. We love you. Glory, glory, glory. Pick a side. That wraps up the stuff. That wraps up. I don't even know what to say. I'm high as a mug, high as a kite. You can get high in the Lord. I just got high in front of y'all. I'm lit. I'm lit. Now I can go to sleep with some good sleep. Hold on. What time is it? 2 o'clock. I'll probably go to sleep by 3.30. Sleep. Good sleep. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, Jesus of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Neo, my Lord and Savior. Neo, Sabarite. Hallelujah, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He is our boat. He is our confidence. Hallelujah. He's our confidence. See, how do you, oh, you don't fear man when you're in God because you fear God and you know who you are. You know, you're confident. You don't care what other people think about you if you're serving the Lord. Now, now is the time. Whoo. The time is now. Fasting is hard. I know, brother. <laughs> Trust me, I know. But we die of our flesh. If you fail, keep going. I'm telling you. But try, try to live a lifestyle of fasting. I know it can be hard because I've been called to it and I feel many millions, million, 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 millions of times, but I keep going and I'm going to keep going to I see our king. Because <laughs> I see the results of fasting, first of all. It is good results. We, we see science even prove this. People that don't even know Jesus, that don't know the Lord, proves it as well. Because the principle is the principle. What goes up must come down. If you fast and, and, and you're, you're taking away food... Bro, you're going to reverse aging. You're going to gain energy. You're going to gain clarity. Uh, you're going to be more organized, more disciplined. Just Life is just greater. Life is greater. Yeah, you can do water. You can do water. You can do no water. 
If you don't want to, if you can't do it the full day, that's why I said I'm going to make, I'm going to just type, okay, I'm going to tell you now. So write it down. But I'm going to make something after this too. Oh, I hear, I feel him in my ear. Oh my gosh, it's crazy. Oh my gosh, he must be cleaning my ear. Yep, yep, yep. So I can hear even clearer so I can understand what God is saying. Jesus, even about you. Maybe it's something about you. <clears throat> oh my God. Okay, so 6 to 8 a.m. Okay, 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 okay. You can start at 6 a.m., right? And try to go to 6 p.m. If you cannot go to 6 p.m., go to 3 p.m. If you cannot go to 3 p.m., go to 12. Go to 12 a.m. Or is it p.m.? Yeah, 12 p.m. So that means 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I mean, that's a good time. Anyway, that's six hours that you're fasting of the day where you can be giving your time to the Lord and focusing on eating the word. Focusing on eating the word, reading the scriptures over and over, asking God, Holy Spirit, lead me as I read. Hallelujah. Break down these scriptures so I can enter into it. See, that's what the word does. Mm. This is just scripture. I'm going to keep seeing this message. It is amazing. I love it. But it is not God. But it's a tool to get you closer to God. To help you understand God and understand yourself. Understand the things of this world. We have to go inside of this scripture to understand it though. How do we go inside? With the word. With God. Hallelujah. We go inside the scripture. That's what we want to do. That's how we become full. We can really become full off the world, child. <sighs> the people who walked with God, they fasted. They didn't eat much. Some of them didn't eat at all. Not physical food. They were eating the word. Have you heard of Enoch? He walked with the Lord. Why? Because he was eating the word, child. That stuff is real. We don't have to live off of food. God literally gave me that revelation. Like we, everything that we need is really inside of us. Y'all can even look this up. Even if they don't follow the, the same God, it's principle. It's people on this earth, bro, that's called breatharians. They are called breatharians. Some people call them different. They don't eat. And they thrive. Some of them haven't eaten for 20 plus years. That's how Enoch was. That's how Jesus was. The only time Jesus would eat was to tell a story. It was always symbolic why he would eat physical food. He didn't need it because he was filled up with the word of God. If physical food fills us up, but it can destroy us too. But I'm talking about healthy food that gives you energy, that gives you um, clarification, it gives you ideas and creativity. What do you think? What more can this, this is just a symbol, can this food do for you? So practice this. You're not going to start off. Maybe you won't start off good. Just keep continue to do it. It says it in the word. Self-discipline is going to be hard at first, but continue to do it. And it becomes easier and easier. It goes back to inertia. Look up the um, theory, inertia, so you can understand it better. Once you win that thing, you get a second win. The Holy Spirit. It's been times where I went fasting and fought, I mean, I about died. So many times I'm going to continue to die though because our flesh is supposed to die. But the reward that I have, have experienced for, for living a fasted lifestyle is priceless. It's priceless. And I'm committed to mastering it. Have I mastered it yet? No, absolutely not. And I fast a lot. I fast a lot. But how God wants us to be, well, we should be fasting every day. Because we gotta get we gotta get filled up with this word, y'all. We not filled up with this word. There's too many distractions. We already know. Even in the olden times, I remember I, they lived a fasted lifestyle, and they didn't eat how we eat now. Our food is literally dumbing us down. Literally, it's killing us faster and dumbing us down, right? So I do. I got my wellness degree. In kinesiology i was researching with the lord because he's explaining to me about the body and how it's just it's just all go back to him right but the people back in the day they were they were so freaking ahead of their time 
because they lived a fasted lifestyle, bro. They was like literally pulling things out of the spirit. They were so ahead of us, like even building the freaking pyramids. Only fasted type of people can do that. People that's eating good. <laughs> Did y'all know there is a such thing as a leg, a uh, um, not leg amputation. Uh, what's that called? When you um, hold on. Transplant. You know, is a such thing as a a leg transplant. And they did it back in like the, before the 1700s, where you can get a whole nother human leg. They was doing crazy type stuff back before technology was even here. Because they was living a fasted lifestyle. If you think of all the philosophers, all the great people, the, the, um, Albert Einstein's, the, the, um, what's the, the uh, uh, um, what's that dude, um, who, 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 who's a creative, he's like a thought leader, he's a, a writer. All these people, all these great people, they pull from the spirit realm. And they live weirdly weird lifestyles that are not weird. Like even those monks type of people, they tap into something higher. That's what God is calling us. And that's what I've noticed in my that's why I'm committed to fasting. You get more. You get more rewards. I'm gonna be honest. And I don't say this to boast about the fasting. I just want the God just wants to want people to know that this stuff is. You're, you're capable. He created you more than capable. I went 17 days without food. And that's nothing. And it was a great reward. So many miracles. Not because God just giving it to you. The miracles is already there. It's just us catching up to them. When we're fasting, it speeds things up. People are healed. You make more money. Because you're more creative. You're more active. It was a time. See, that's why... My y'all getting me on this because this is God, really. Because I that's what I forgot to say. God is calling many of you, many of you, including me, to a, 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 a fasted lifestyle and to eat healthier, to eat fruits and plants, really. Because you tap into another level. Shoot. That's why I gotta stay committed. Cause I wanna I y'all gotta see this thing. It was a time when I was really because I, I fall, I, I do good and then I fall off. Do good for a year. But I said, I'm committed to this year and it's time because it, the, the things of the Lord. It, it was a time where I couldn't, I didn't even have to sleep. And I was just in the things of the Lord, getting business done. I mean, I couldn't sleep. I probably was sleeping like an hour, but I was healthy and I was thriving because I'm fasting. We don't even need sleep. And we can tap into a whole place where we don't need sleep because we're literally in a rested life. Where I'm telling you, when I first came to Christ, I was like, Enoch. Like, things didn't bother me. You know, not, not, like, I didn't, I didn't even attract negativity at that time. Like, I didn't even have no demons attacking me at that time. Like, it's a whole nother level that we ain't tapped into. You get what I'm saying? It's another level. We're, we're, we, need to stop, we need to graduate. That's what God's saying. What Paul say? Put away childish things. The world is already proven. It's these little Muslim people. All them, they know. God made this for his children too. We need to know these things. Eat. Eat God's food. When you're hungry in the morning, this is how we start. You're hungry in the morning, you want breakfast, eat the food first. Even if you still, even if you still eat breakfast, you're building your spirit man up to where you're going to eat some food before you get that physical food. Jesus. And this will help. It, I'm telling you, it will help with your finances. If you are, um, if you can't have kids, it will help with you having kids. If you are just in toxic baby, daddy, baby, mama drama, it will help with that. If you need, you, you're confused about something, it will help with that. I'm telling you, bro, fasting, prayer is key. We need to tap in more. So, yep, 6 in the morning, we're doing this fast. I'm going to make the uh, flyer. You fall, don't fall under condemnation, though. I used to do that a lot. It's all a learning um, process. I used to fall under condemnation. I didn't even think that fasting, when I first started fasting, I thought if you didn't go the whole day, you weren't fasting. <laughs> That's a lot, too. God is outside of time. 
people i did a fasting um video check out my fasting series that thing went viral because it's so much good god revelation in there it's so good and i'm about to finish it because i i stopped i did like 10 of them but it's so much more y'all oh so much more pregnant women can fast you fast two hours like literally take a time like okay be intentional if definitely if you're gonna do it for a short time be intentional I'm about to fast. I'm about to eat on the word. And that's it. Get in your word. You don't feel like reading to listen to it. We got so many apps. Y'all know the Bible projects? It's so much stuff. We should be thriving. But it's so many distractions. So God understands. It's so many. It's so easy to slip up. But let's stay focused. Let's use these tools. Let's use the internet, chat, GTP, whatever you want to use for the good, for God's glory. Take out a little time of your day and fast. Feed me, Lord. Hallelujah. We want to taste you. That's what he said. My word is sweet. Y'all, bro, look at them scriptures. They was really eating the word. I'm telling you, I felt God be like literally inside my mouth, inside my body. Like you can taste him. When he says it, taste and see that the Lord is good, he don't be playing. DJ, we, you ain't tapped in yet. Israel. The people of Israel. When they were free from um, bondage from Egypt, guess what they was eating? Manna. Manna is not physical food. Manna is heavenly food. It's the spirit of the Lord. They was feeding off of that. And guess what? They wanted to settle. They, they didn't want the manna no more. So God tolerated them just to have physical food. For just some time. But they just went on it. And you know how flesh overtakes. Let's get back to that spiritual manner y'all. Let's eat. I'm telling you. It's been times where I fasted. I'm hungry. I ain't feel like it. But I start praying. That's why tongues are so so beneficial. If you don't have tongues. You can get it. It's, it's capped when people be like. Oh only some people can get tongues. No. We all can. We're all his children. Tap in. Or get an understanding if you're lacking it. Just say, oh, I'm, I'm lacking revelation in it. But all of us can get tongues. But tongues literally encourages you and it builds up your spirit, man. Just say, I don't feel like praying. After a time, it's the Holy Spirit start taking over. And it's not you. And that will even help you to discern how do you hear God? How do you know it's God? And how do you know it's you or the devil? Because even when I'm singing... And rapping. Sometimes it's God. Like all of God. You know all the time it's God because he works through our works. But we still have our own personality and all that stuff. Which is still God. Hear this with wisdom. But sometimes it's literally God control. Like take over you. I know the difference. Because God sound better than me. I'll be like whoo. Jesus can sing. Boy, and rap too. But I encourage y'all. I'm going to wrap it up. Because that's really what the Lord is saying. That's all I want to eat right now. This is what you eat on now though. And you see how I just got high in the spirit. I'm coming back down a little bit now. But I was just high in the spirit. That's how you eat off him. You continue to press in that highness. I keep getting drunk in the spirit and high. That stuff builds us up. That stuff is not weird. That's what the church is missing. That's what the church is missing. If I would have known that you can get drunk in the spirit. And you can get high. I would have never smoked weed. I like guess all good side effects. Could you pray for me? Hallelujah. Yes. My God. Am I saying your, your name right when I say Hesse? And let me know what you want me to pray for. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you for blessing your people as we bless you. Hesse. Okay. Okay. Father God, we thank you for Sister Hesse. Thank you for her being on this live. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We continue to encourage her. We, we want to continue to be um, a support of her as she journeys with you in this body, in this um, walk with you. 
We thank you that we're able to let her know that she has her brothers and sisters in Christ who is cheering her on, who really love the Lord, who really want to push her to greater, hallelujah, and to purpose in the Lord. Hallelujah. I ask that you give her clarity in the Lord. Hallelujah. I ask that you give her grace in the Lord. Hallelujah. Let her know that she has grace, that your grace is sufficient for her in the situation that she is in. Hallelujah. God is giving you grace. Hallelujah. He wants you to understand that you have grace in the situation that you are literally in right now. I don't know what situation he's talking about, but you have grace in that. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Ah, uh, yeah. He want to teach you things through your, um, through that. He want to teach you things and he's going to help you to heal other people. So you have to go through that. That's why you, he's saying you have grace and this eating stuff. Hallelujah. He want to get you put on that eating. That eating is going to take it away. He's going to get you, a, um, you're going to be in the health and wellness business for the Lord for skincare. Skincare, my eczema, yep, for skincare. You're going to be healed, but it's by God's works that you're going to be healed. And so it's going to be a journey. It's not going to be a miraculous healing like overnight. It's going to be a journey of you learning how to treat God's temple. You're eating. I'm telling you, this is him. He heavy on me right now, but he's giving you more grace for that. So he's going to give you more clarity and wisdom and understanding. Even if you don't understand what I'm saying now, you're going to understand. Hallelujah. Jesus. Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father God, for her word. Hallelujah. Thank you for stamping, stamping her word. Hallelujah. This literally is your elevation. This literally is your call. <laughs> the thing that you're complaining about is literally going to open so many doors for you. Literally, you're going to have a whole platform about how to reverse what you have and helping other women and men to overcome the same thing. You're the solution. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, God, for her word. Oh, my Lord. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm going hey, to buy some. I'm going to buy some whenever you get that thing. Jesus. My God, Nazareth, we love you, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you. Mm. Jesus. Woo. Jesus. Health and wellness is what I wanted to go into school into because of this. <laughs> Bro, I'm telling you, he heavy on me. I'm like, Lord, Jesus Christ. He heavy on it. And he's, I guess, I mean, you probably like, because he said grace, so... So you must have been like hit like hard on yourself when it comes to this because he emphasizes the grace. You must don't know that it's grace in that. <laughs> like he's like this is literally his plan. Like he's literally turning around for your good. I'm telling you, you're going to have your whole family off of this, off of your, that problem. And it's crazy because so many people in the healthcare field, but we need some Christian based healthcare, like skin care, definitely skincare we need that it was somebody i seen who was selling oils i was like man because i i wanted to start but i didn't and i was like i do need some oil i would love to definitely hair oil because i'm all about natural hair and skin but and you can even all oh my because i'm all about like staying younger you know what i'm saying looking good for the lord I'm actually was just starting to like do more skin routine, natural, natural skin routine. So this is really good. Press into that. Like, don't even, that's what you do. That's your Psalms 91. That's your Psalms 91. And you literally take that scripture. Oh, okay. Okay. Jesus. That's your Psalms 91. You press into what the Lord is telling you right now into that business. Literally write down your business plan for that. Give it to God. Make God your CEO. This is literally your business and ministry. And it's going to set you free. The more you talk about it, start um, posting your story. Um, share your videos, like your skincare. Take pictures. I hope you got pictures. Even if you don't, it's okay. Just just take it. And, bro, you're going to help so many people. Jesus. Jesus. Read read about um, the lady with the oil. Oh, my gosh. Read about that and ask God for understanding. Y'all, help me out. I'm on fire. <laughs> Jesus all over me. Jesus. Read about the label um, with the oil. She basically turned um, 
what she had, what, what God had given her to a business. She was able to pay off her debts, free her family. Jesus. Oh, hold on. Let me go to it. Jesus. Hallelujah. What is that? Um, my God. Thank you, Jesus. Let me see. I think it was the prophet Isaiah that came to her. Is it Isaiah? Or is it Elijah? Hold on. I'm about to have to look it up real quick. I'm about to, I'm about to give it. Can be your, you're going to be profitable in that area. You're going to be prosperous in that area. You're going to be an expert. You have experience. People go to, go to school for experience. And you don't even have to go to school for that. God gave you experience so that you could be a, a, a master. A, um, where do we go to? to um, the professionals. Can't think of that other word, but you, you get what I'm saying. Hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah. He wanted you to hear that word, and I'm so thankful. I'm thankful you asked that, and we prayed for you because, boy, boy, boy. And this is a time. This is your time. So everything that I was saying on this live is for everybody. It's for everybody. And you is just proof, like literally. So this word is literally for everybody as well. Jesus, hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you, Hesse. Hallelujah. And I'm excited. I'm excited for you. I'm excited for your journey. I know it's going to be lit because it's led by God. Oh, stay connected. Because God, I mean, even if you don't though, like, yeah, just, just stay connected right now. That's what God's saying. Jesus. I'm gonna stay on for five more minutes. If God don't tell me to say no, I'm getting off. Cause I, I need to I need to lay down. But this been so good. This has set me free. I've gotten revelation from y'all stories, from your story. Jesus, we thank you. How often do you go live? I'm trying to go. I really want to start every day. That's my goal. I've been so busy, though, with the things of the Lord. Like, it's been, shoot, it ain't been every day. But I'm going to get there. Um, At least a couple times a week, though. And it's different. I usually be up at night. I'm a, God have me up at night because I'm a watcher. So it'd be late <laughs> for me. But, shoot, I see, like, TikTok, they love the late stuff, too, so. It's all like being on TikTok and I'd be on Facebook too so it can stay on live. So you can follow me on Facebook if you don't catch my live and YouTube. Um, Petra, where am I on Facebook? Petra Brene. Petra Brene Elbert on Facebook. And then Petra the Fisher of Men on YouTube. Amen. Keep me in your prayers, please. I'm going to keep you. <laughs> Bro, I like that. You is not ashamed to ask for prayers. And that's a good thing, like for real, because some people... They be like, man, I'm asking too much. I'm asking for prayers, but you like me, I be like, hey, I don't care if I ask a million times. <laughs> That's what's up. Like, for real, I'm laughing because it's hilarious because do, I've done the same thing. And I still do. Shoot, I press it to the prayers. I be calling, uh, <laughs> I don't care. I don't care how close I am to God. I'm not opposed to nobody praying for me. I mean, of course, you use wisdom. Everybody can't pray for you. You know, you got witches and stuff. But people that I'm led to, man, you can pray for me. Shoot, even if I'm praying for the same thing, go ahead. Because you never know who, like, because it is levels in this in the kingdom. You never know if they tapped in a little more in that area. I'll be calling 700 Club. I believe they are a great healing ministry. I'll be asking for prayers for my mom, all my family. Man, I don't be playing when it comes to prayer. <laughs> he said, ask and you receive. I'm going to ask a billion times till I see it. Yeah, well, I'm glad I made you laugh in this scary situation. You're going to get through it, though, for real. I'm telling you, you're going to get through it. And you've been on this live, too. Like, well, how you be catching me live? Like, I feel like God is really connecting you. Like, for real. Because you be catching... I don't go live at the same time or nothing. Um, I'm asking for a release from stress and hardship. Okay. Hallelujah. Our boss man twin. Okay. Lisa Strish. Father God, we ask that you help boss boss twin. I that is so crazy to call you boss twin while I'm praying. Like, what's your real name? 
Bro, y'all gotta change y'all names. Some of y'all gotta change y'all names. On TikTok, bro. You a rapper or something? God is so good. He is faithful. He really is. Boss Twin. Well, it, I be silly with God, so let me just say Boss Twin. He know who I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm sorry, Boss Twin, for real. I'm a real person. I'm sorry. I'm really goofy, so I hope that I'm not offending you. Um, I'm really a goofy person, like for real. And I really think that I'm a Christian comedian too. Eventually, after I get used up by God with the talking of the Lord, I want to go and be a comedian. So, Father God, we thank you for Boss Twin Twin. Should I say Boss Twin Twin or just Boss Twin? I'm playing. Okay. Father God, we thank you for Boss Twin Lord Jesus, whatever he is going through, Father God, help him um, just alleviate the problem or whatever you're trying to teach him, Father God, help him to have your mercy and your comfort through it so he, he won't fall and be broken and, and not be able to get put back together, Father God. Let him have grace, the grace that is sufficient for him as well, Father God. We thank you for him being on this live, Father God. We speak this word of life upon him, Father God. We speak love in his life. We speak encouragement. Hallelujah. We speak encouragement in his life. He shall do mighty things for your kingdom, Father God. Hallelujah. He shall be like a Paul. Hallelujah. And he shall be bold and is going to the nations and speaking the word of God because he knows that God has proved that he is real into his life as well. Hallelujah. We just thank you for your love. Hallelujah. We thank you that you're sending the helper. Hallelujah. And your angels are warring for him. Hallelujah. And whatever the enemy is sending to him it must be destroyed hallelujah that he takes upon your yoke who he takes upon your yoke that is easy that is light hallelujah let him fill your yoke right now in the mighty name of jesus hallelujah let a rush of wind a rush of wind come into his room come into his atmosphere in the mighty name of jesus let your healing power deliver him from anything any wickedness any evil any pestilence oh my gosh any dark or wicked spirits that are surrounding him that are speaking lies and speaking hate and death into his life we cast it out hallelujah and we bind them hallelujah and they have they must go they must go now in the mighty name of jesus oh jesus hallelujah neo they must go in the night neo they must go in the night yes thank you jesus hallelujah thank you for the release Hallelujah. Thank you for the relief upon his life. Oh, hallelujah. Your glory shall manifest in his life from here on now. More of your glory. Oh, Jesus. He should have an understanding that be like, what the heck? How, how, how do you know these things? Oh, my gosh. The wisdom of the Lord is falling upon him. Hallelujah. Continue to create in him a new heart. Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. Boss Twin, do you feel something? See my last two comments. All right, I'm about to look at it. Oh, the body is so glad that that's beautiful. I swear. Man, stay faithful, man. Stay, stay here and fill it up. That's how you um eat his word too. That's how you definitely eat his word. Listening to the word, man. When I first got saved, I was listening. See my last two comments. It feels so good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I felt a release. I felt a release rush. Jesus, he loves you. He loves you so much. He loves you, Boss Twin. Hallelujah. He loves you so much. Yes, yes. Thank you, Father God. We thank you. Well, I love y'all. I'm really about to get off here um, and pray before I go to sleep. I pray that you guys are filled. That's all God wants you to be is filled off of his word. So that other stuff, that other junk, all those lies, all that death, all that defeat, it can't even fit in. It can't even fit in you.
bless you sister hallelujah thank you so much for pouring intense hallelujah no problem at all that's what we all do that's what we're here for literally hallelujah we pour into each other so, all right y'all y'all be blessed i'll see y'all next time all right brother Perfect time because my son is literally just woke up. I must have woke him up. <laughs> His little hand. Let me exit this out.